Hello and welcome to Car Retrospective, where today we will examine a car that truly embellishes all of the craziness that comes with being named as a sports car, the Lamborghini Countach. Let's have a look. The Lamborghini Miura had been in production since 1967. While it was very successful, it was beginning to show its age. Competitors like the Ferrari Daytona, which was released in 1971, had sprung up and began to put the Miura on the back burner. So, Ferruccio Lamborghini, the man the company was named after, and coincidentally the president of Lamborghini, began looking to the future, and created concept cars for a new supercar that Lamborghini could bounce back with, with the project being codenamed El LP112. The main thing that had to be included was a body that was both aerodynamic and efficient, while looking as beautiful as possible. Marcello Gandini was brought on to design the car, who produced the successful design of the Miura. It's hard to explain, but almost anyone with no car knowledge will see a Lamborghini and know what it is, and it's thanks to this man. Up to this point, Lamborghini was much more comfortable building Grand Tourers, but Lamborghini saw the value and popularity with a rear-wheel drive mid-engine sports car, and so set his team in that direction. The car also featured modern innovations that addressed a lot of the problems found in the Miura, such as reducing the lift off oversteer and making the weight distribution more evened out. Plus, the wedge-shaped design was seen as very futuristic and was well-liked, as well as having a shorter wheelbase than the Miura. The best addition was probably the scissor doors, and the Countach was actually the first production car to feature them. They weren't entirely an extravagant design addition, however, as they were actually necessary for entry. Horizontal doors actually made entry very, very difficult with the Countach's low and wide structure, even for someone like Tom Cruise. At the 1970 Turin Motor Show, a car called the Lancia Stratos Zero concept car was shown. While technically it had no connections to the Countach or Lamborghini, it was also designed by Gandini, and you can really see the DNA of the Countach beginning to show through. Plus, it was much earlier in development, which excuses the strange cheesiness of the car. The Countach properly debuted, however, at the 1971 Geneva Auto Show as the Lamborghini LP500 concept car. Plus, at some point in this stage of development, the Countach name we have all come to know and love was thought up. Traditionally, Lamborghini's cars were named after bulls and bullfighting based on his interests, but the Countach broke that trend. The word is a deviation of the word contact, I hope I'm saying that correctly, a Piedmontese exclamation of surprise, native to northern Italy. Each variation of the car was then labelled with the abbreviation LP, which stands for Longitudinale Posteore, or Longitudinal Rear in English, referring to the orientation and position of the engine in the car. Lamborghini's team of engineers then went on to complete another three years of hard work refining the design and ironing out certain kinks, and the car was ready by 1974, and was released under the name LP400. The car was powered by the tried and tested Lamborghini V12 engine, designed in 1963 by Giotto Bizzarini who has already made an appearance in one of these videos. The engine had already appeared in cars like the 300 GT, the 450 GT and the Espada, and of course the Miura. While it was mounted in the Countach like the other cars, rear engine, rear wheel drive, it was fitted longitudinally rather than transversely. As with the Miura, the original V12 was a 3.9 litre, but the lack of power at low rev ranges meant that the Countach would not be efficient in urban driving, so it was redesigned into a 5 litre V12, which was able to produce around 440 horsepower. However, the initial production models were fitted with this 3.9 litre engine, as the 5 litre engine had durability problems that weren't fixed in time for production. These cars, therefore, could only make around 370 horsepower. However, the car was still very popular at release, and between 1974 and 1977, Lamborghini produced 158 LP400s. In 1978, Lamborghini then introduced the LP400S. While the engine was downgraded to just 350 horsepower, the most radical change came with the tyres. The original was fitted with the narrowest tyres ever seen on a production car at the time, so with the S the company decided to go in the opposite direction, and the car was fitted with the widest tyres seen on a production car of the time. I mean, just look at those tyres, those are some thick boys. There were also fiberglass wheel arch extensions added, which looked pretty sleek. Plus, the now iconic V-shaped wing was added as an optional extra. 
While it did look extremely cool and did improve high speed stability, it actually reduced top speed by around 10 miles per hour. Still, most models of the 400S were ordered with the wing attached. Three different series of the 400S were produced, but not much differed between them. Then the 80s arrived, and with them brought the LP500S, sporting a 4.7 litre V12 making 370 horsepower. Apart from that, the 500 didn't really bring much else to the table, apart from an updated interior, so good job 500. 1985, on the other hand, did produce some changes. The 5000 Quattro Valvole. The engine now had four valves per cylinder, as the name implies, as well as a 5.2 litre V12 producing 449 horsepower. The carburettors, which incidentally were used on all other versions of the car, were moved from the side to the top of the engine, as you can see here. But that made rear visibility almost zero, but who needs to reverse a Lamborghini? Some later models of the QV, however, eradicated this problem by replacing the carburettors with a more modern fuel injection system. Overall, there were 610 QVs built, with 66 having the fuel injection system. The final version of the Countach was the 25th Anniversary Edition, which started production in 1987. Significant restyling was done by Horatio Pagani to honour the event, before he went on to create his own automobile company, aptly named Pagani. This featured the most radical changes to the design of the car yet, most notably with the rear intake ducts, which look much more pleasing with more gradual styling. The rear end saw a huge change with a large bumper and sleeker lights, but the redesign wasn't universally liked, as many felt it was too drastic and overall ugly. Most controversially were the fins added to the rear intake ducts, which to many resembled the then new and popular Ferrari Testarossa. However, they were added once again not just for aesthetics, but to help with engine cooling. The 25th anniversary edition was still well received however, only being outsold by the QV. Me personally, I love how it looks. But if there is a Countach I dislike the looks of however, it's the US imports. Imagine designing a sleek, beautiful machine of precision and speed, but then when you try to export it to another country, the government says it doesn't meet safety standards and sticks a great big bumper on the front. Well, that's what the Americans did. Otherwise, it was the exact same car, but... God, that bumper's ugly. The Anniversary Edition was, as I said, the final version of the Countach, being the most refined of the lot. It could do a top speed of 180 miles per hour and did not to 16 4.7 seconds. As well as these variants, many one-offs were produced, such as the Walter Wolf Countach. Walter Wolf was a wealthy Canadian businessman who wanted to buy an LP400, but was dissatisfied with the engine. So he asked the designers to put in a better one. So in response, they fitted an engine identical to the 5 litre V12 found in the original prototype. Supposedly, the Walter Wolf could do 201 miles per hour. Two more were produced. There was also the Countach QVX, which was a specially modified model. The car was fitted with a new chassis and engine courtesy of Spice Engineering. The 5.7 litre V12 could make a supposed 700 horsepower and had all the makings of a great Group C car. Upon being entered into the 1985 championship, it did okay keeping up with the lead in Jaguar, but in the end it didn't do too well. It was entered again into the 1986 season, but funding soon ran dry and it was pulled from the competition. It even had a short yet fulfilling job being a Formula 1 safety car, and from 1980 to 1983 the Countach was used in the Monaco Grand Prix. By the late 80s, the once futuristic and fantastical design of the early 70s was beginning to look just a little bit outdated, as the body hadn't been updated in any substantial way since its debut in 1971. So Lamborghini set to work on their next V12 supercar, and the Lamborghini Diablo was launched in 1990, leaving the Countach in the dust. But I'm saying that like the Countach became a remnant of the past, forgotten even. Au contraire, it's still well loved. In 2004, Car Magazine Sports Car International listed it as number 3 on their greatest sports cars of the 70s. And in June 2014, an LP400 was sold for £953,000 at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Not bad. Well, there's the Countach. I love the Countach. 
A lot of sports and supercars are just fast for the sake of being fast. It's rare to find a car of this nature to go so crazy as the Countach did back in the 70s. Yeah, the design just looks like a wedge of cheese nowadays, but back in its heyday, this thing was the thing of the future, both in technology and looks. And before anyone says, yes, I have been pronouncing the name right this entire video, it's Countach, nice and elegant, not Countach, for obvious reasons.